All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the DeWiz Golf Know Your Numbers Facebook Live webinar. The second webinar we've done here at DeWiz, the first one came back in the summer, but I know we have a ton of new users, a ton of new members to this group, and we thank everybody for taking the time out of their Saturday, whether you're here in the United States like I am, it's a Saturday morning over in Europe taking some time out of your Saturday afternoon to join us here on our Facebook Early Adopters DeWiz Users page. And in just a couple minutes, we're going to bring in Marcus Westerberg, the co-founder and chief technology officer of DeWiz Golf. He's going to walk you through everything that you need to know to help you know your numbers and how you can use DeWiz to become a better golfer. My name is Matt Lawrence. I'm the newest member of the DeWiz Golf team here, and I'm actually based out of Baltimore, Maryland. And I handle the social media and uh, content creation aspects of our company. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get going and we bring Marcus in. If you haven't seen it over the last couple of days, it was a big week for us here at The Wiz. It started last week. Um, at the end of last week, Marcus actually joined Mark Immelman on his On The Mark podcast. It was a, a great review of The Wiz. Mark is a huge supporter of ours and, and such a knowledgeable name um, in, the, in the golf world. And so if you haven't checked that out yet, you can go to YouTube.com, search On The Mark podcast, and you can watch Marcus and Mark Immelman talk about The Wiz. He went on for about 45 minutes. They did a whole demo. Um, a lot of what you're going to see today, but it's, it's worth checking out because Mark is a, uh, he's a big fan of ours. Later in the week, we became a official product of the PGA of Sweden. So a great recognition from the PGA of Sweden. We are an official product um, with them now. And Marcus, he actually just got back from um, the PGA summit um, in Sweden, the networking summit that lasted the last couple of days. He just got back and now he's taking the time out to, uh, to, to talk to our Facebook group and our users and our members. So uh, without further ado, we're going to bring Marcus in here. Let's get him into the broadcast. There he is. Hello, Marcus. How you doing? Hey, Matt. It's very good. I'm going to try to stay in the camera. Yeah. There you go. I got you. you. How, uh, how's everything going? I see you're in your studio. How's the, uh, how's the weather treating you out in Sweden right now? Actually, the weather is perfect today. We've got a perfect fall day, not a lot of wind and uh, even sunshine. So we're, we're fortunate. But like you said, I'm back from the PGA Summit. I'm ready to start this webinar. I'm looking forward to all the questions. I know there are a lot of questions out there. And we're going to focus today on Know Your Numbers. Yeah, and I, I mentioned it at the top of the broadcast, but Know Your Numbers is such a, it's a huge motto of our company. It's one of the core elements um, of our company, of our business. Can you talk to me a little bit about, before we get into everything, but just where kind of that idea of Know Your Numbers came from and how um, the everyday golfer can use that to help them improve their golf game? Well, the street name on tour is Feel Is Not Real. And this is coming out to the broader public now because everyone knows this. What I feel in my golf swing may be real, but again, it may be not. That's why the whiz is so important to me. And so, so many of the whiz users just knowing the whiz is not going to tell you how you feel. The, the whiz is going to tell you what you're doing. And that's really the key with knowing your numbers. For me, I know my numbers. I know my start to impact is about one second. If I'm slower, I know I need to speed up. If I'm too fast, I know I need to slow down unless I'm going for that extra power. And I'm going to talk a lot more about these numbers. But that is the key with knowing your numbers. And how do you know your numbers? Well, you hit a lot of balls and just watch your do whiz. Use your favorite function. When you hit a shot, press once, and you're going to favorite mark that swing. And you can find it in the app and show only favorites. And you can go back and see, what did I do when I hit those good shots? And then after a while, you will get to know your numbers. And more than that, take the whiz out on the golf course and get to see your numbers on the golf course. They change. And let again, look at what your good shots are. That's what we're looking for. And I'm glad you, you mentioned the, the favoriting aspect that you can do that just by hitting the center button um, on your DeWiz. So one of, and we're going to hop into the actual device and using it here in a second. So one of the main questions that I receive, whether it's through Instagram, on Facebook, I know Peyton, our customer service rep, um, she receives a lot of the same questions. And it's a lot of just golfers asking when they first get their device, what should I put in for my parameters? And they want to hop in directly into the practice and learn. 
use the learning stimuli and they ask, okay, well, what should my transition be? What should my tempo be? And they're asking what numbers that they should put in for the parameters for the learning stimuli. And I think they're a little overwhelmed at first. What would your answer to that be? Because I know for me personally, when I respond to them, I suggest that people will start in the discovery mode. You, you talked about it initially, just go into discovery mode and hit balls, go to the range, hit balls and get an understanding of what your swing is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because the WIS is not there to create one perfect swing for everyone. It's for you to discover your perfect swing. Then again, we have some guidelines on the numbers, like, like say transition. Usually it's better to have a pretty neutral transition allow, around plus minus one inch or three centimeters uh, from, uh, from uh, on-plane transition, minus, minus three or plus three. And uh, uh, of course, uh, full swing tempo ratio, which is basically the rhythm between your backswing time and your downswing time. Three to one is the tour tempo, the golden ratio. Many top players that I have been with, working with the WIS, they are on that three to one number. Very few are above it. Some are below it. I can say that Annika is about 2.5 to one, meaning that in relation, her backswing is a little bit faster than her downswing comparison to other uh, top professionals. Um, length of backswing. It's very personal, but I have not seen anyone who has made their backswing longer that at the same time has not hit the ball farther. And I did not think that when we started with the whiz. And I'm sure there are guys out there who can make a shorter backswing and hit it longer, but it's been extremely efficient to increase club head speed, making the backswing longer. Like, like VJ talked about in the golf.com article that came out Thursday uh, this week. And VJ mentioned his backswing is 59 inches. That it, the take the flexibility needed to be able to do that is incredible. I know yesterday I tried going to the range and trying to hit that 59 inch backswing. The furthest I could get was 56, and to get to 59 inches is uh, that's that's some serious flexibility to be able to do that. Um, so, Mark, thing, sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead. And the funny thing, yeah, you, you BJ is actually a bit longer than that. He puts his limit at 64. He wants to be longer than 64 inches. And he told me that he tries to push himself to 70 inch backswing in practice, but in tournaments, he's around 67. But he puts wow. the limit at 64 and really wants to push himself over to 64. And like he said in the interview, he sets the learning stimuli at level five because he can see how much more focused he gets. He said, when I don't have the learning stimuli on, I can make mistakes and even get the backswing down to 62 or 60 inches when I'm trying to go 64 plus. But with the learning stimuli on, he knows that he needs to cross the 64 and he does every time. That, that's incredible. So, Marcus, let's let's take a look at the app. Um, let's I mentioned at the top we have um, about 30 new members of this Facebook group that joined just in the last three days, 10 of which came um, overnight. So I think we have a lot of new users. We've done one of these webinars in the past, but I think um, for a lot of our new users, they may either just purchase their DeWiz, they may uh, just be getting it. And, you know, let, let's take a look at everything that the app has to offer and, um, and how we can help uh, know your numbers through DeWiz. Absolutely. So here in the, I'm going to get a T not to move anything here. All right. I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah. So this is the opening page of the app. And right now you can see that the WIS was disconnected. The WIS turns off after five minutes without a golf swing. Good to know. Automatically. You just turn it on after that. So we got to get started here, which is the only thing you can get into when the app is new. You need to go through the get started to open up the rest of the app. So the get started is just getting you familiar with the app with the expressions that we use and uh, some of the numbers. Discovery is basically discovering your numbers. Again, get to know your numbers. One good thing to point out and you need to know about discovery is that when in discovery mode, you will get the numbers you deserve. That's our expression, the numbers you deserve, which means that if you're still enough at the beginning, when you get the green light, the ready to swing signal, you will get all the numbers. If you're a little less still, you will not get transition, maybe not length of backswing. That's because transition needs more, uh, a little fraction of a still longer at the beginning 
to get that precision for transition. Uh, so that's good to know with discovery. In the practice and learn, you get to choose between the four uh, features that we have here to practice with. That's the transition, meaning the change between backswing to downswing. Go a second if you're going over the top, which is a huge slicer's problem, or falling too much under the top. And uh, here you can set your parameters and practice goals. Let's say I have an over the top problem. I turn the over the top on and I, I can see if, uh, oh, I can't see anything from here. Yeah, good. So let's say I was 10 centimeters over the top and I wanna push myself back down to a more neutral transition. I can set myself at maybe six, then push myself to three, going back to an uh, on-plane transition. And if I want to get more draw in my ball, I go to the minus transition. And vice versa, if you have an under-the-top problem coming too much, too low, and hooking the ball maybe, then you try to push yourself up to again to a more neutral transition. Again, we're looking at around plus minus three centimeters. I can mention that VJ is about plus four centimeters. He loves to hit the pull cut every club. So he wants to be over the top in transition. So let me just exit out of here. All right. And, and Marcus, but, but before we get going, we do have a uh, first question came in um, from Mark, one of our users. He says, how is the backswing length measured? Is that the length of the arc of your hand path? And is that what it makes from the start to top of backswing? Correct. It's the arc of the hand path. And then again, if you make a wider arc, the length of backswing is going to be longer. Awesome. And so now let's um, let's hop into the disc wedges um, part of the app as well, because this is something um, that I really want to touch on and how that knowing your numbers really comes into play. It's when trying to dial in those wedges with the disc wedges function um, of the DeWiz app. Talk to us a little bit about setting your gears. I know you've mentioned in the past, I think it's uh, 120, 130, and 140 centimeters that you set your gears to. Um, where do you get those numbers from? And so when when I'm first using the app and I'm trying to go in and figure out what I should put in for my gears and the disc wedges, how should I kind of you know figure out those three values? Yeah, great question. So let's hop in straight to my my gears. You can see my gears here: 60, 80, 100, and 120. My full backswing is around 140. I should say was around 140. Now I have, through the whiz, I've learned to increase my backswing even to 160 with a, a six iron to get more power. But around 140 is my control swing. So that's why I have put in four different disc wedges length of backswings to be able to learn these and control my carry. And how do you do it? Well, you go into edit gears right here and then you create a new gear um oh yeah i don't want to start the guide uh-huh sorry about that no no worries um so you create a new gear there we go here on the wheel i can i can pull the numbers and again if you're in the in the us or you use uh imperial metrics uh, it's going to be in inches. So this is in centimeters. And I can put any gear. Let's say I want to do a 75 centimeter. I go create gear. And then I got another gear here at 75 centimeters. And last thing we got here is tolerance. So when I'm practicing, I put the tolerance level for myself. I got plus minus three centimeters, which is about a little over an inch, 1.2 inches. And I practice that. So 77 centimeters to 83, if I'm going for the 80 number, is allowed. And I won't get the learning stimuli feedback. But as soon as I go longer or I make the turn shorter, I will feel it so I can learn to control these length of backswings. And can we uh, can we take a look here? Do you have a do you have a wedge ready for it for yourself? Let's do that. Let's uh, let's take a look at just so that we can see what the dif what the differences in these swings look like. And so for, for folks that are watching right now, the disc wedges is a part of the practice and learn 
Um, it's one of the practice and learn modes. We also have the disc wedges challenge, which you can find from the home screen. It's at the bottom of the app. And what the disc wedges challenge is, is it will give you 10 randomized length of backswings. And your goal is to try to match whatever it's asking for as, as closely as possible. And it gives you a score for each swing. And then at the end, it gives you an overall score uh, for your entire session, the 10 swings that you made. My highest is, I think I'm at 86 is my highest. I think Marcus gets, he gets 97, 98 on a regular basis. Don't you? <laughs> not, not, not really, but uh, <laughs> I got 95 is my record. I'm pretty proud of that. Okay. Um, so uh, the this twenty challenge is ten given numbers, same numbers for everyone, but it's randomized. So you can compete against yourself and you can compete against your friends because they're doing exactly the same thing. So we're looking at now is this wedges manual, which means I've set it to eighty centimeters and it's going to just keep repeating eighty centimeters for me now in practice. Let's see how I do. Target eighty centimeters. Can you hear the audio feedback? Length of backswing, 72 centimeters. So that was a little bit short. Seventy-nine. So that was pretty good. Now, as maybe some of you may have heard, I did not have the good, bad, good swing, bad swing sound on. So uh, I'm going to show you how to turn that on. You go into the settings, bottom corner. You go into more sound settings there it's a little hard to read, read up to upside down here we have good swing bad swing sound i turned that on and now you will hear immediately how i do Seventy six. So that was just outside my allowance 75. So this is how you keep practicing when you've got one length of backswing you're looking for. 80. There it is. And just quickly, um, a really good function in the disc wedges is to shuffle, meaning the app automatically shuffles between my length of backswing so I can practice them randomly. Why? because that's how we play golf. We play golf randomly. We very rarely hit the same distance shot over and over on the golf course. So let me show you. I go into here and I go to shuffle. Now I've chosen all my five, even my new 75 one, and I just go. Next target, 75 centimeters. You see, I got my new one, first of all. 100. And like you said, Marcus, you know, when you're on the golf course, you're going to have to hit different types of shots. So having that randomized um, length of backswing, it can help you depending on, you know, where you are on the course. Absolutely. 95. Next target, 120. 91. That was more of full swing so, there, about three quarters. So that's how the um, this function works. And there's, there's a last one I want to show you as well. It's completely randomized. It's called random. And you set the minimum and the maximum length of backswing, and the app is going to completely randomize everything for you. And this is also more than it's good to get your wedge distances in. You're going to get more feel for your golf swing. You're going to get a more awareness of where is that 60 centimeter mark and the difference between 60 and 70. You can control your swing much better. Absolutely. And one thing that I will, um, a suggestion that I would make for people, um, I know me personally, the first time I went to the range, and I don't have the ability to be somewhere that's kind of secluded where, you know, I'm at the range, I'm around a ton of people, bring some headphones, get some AirPods, put them in your ear, and you'll be able to get that feedback and having it come directly into your ear. It really helps that that feedback that you hear right after your swing, instead of having the, you know, be worried about having people around you and having your phone volume up, bring some headphones. If you have AirPods, they work perfectly. If you just put them right in your ear and then the sound will come right through your ears. 
yeah, I always use my headphones. It's convenient and uh, it doesn't bother anyone, like Matt said. And I just want to mention that every time I got that eh sound, when I have the learning stimuli turned on, I will feel it as well immediately when I break the threshold. Absolutely. And so speaking of the learning stimuli, I want to kind of jump into the question of, all right, so I know I, I have a baseline of my numbers. I've used discovery mode. I know that, okay, when I hit good shots with my seven iron, I'm generally around, I'm going to use inches, but for me, I'm generally around a negative 0.3, negative 0.4. Okay. I know that my bad shots, I'm generally above zero I'm a plus 0.2, 0.3. How do I then use the learning stimuli to help me hone in on those numbers that I've learned about my golf swing? Yes. Uh, first of all, you just set the thresholds to where you want to be. If you are in transition, you want to set them to your transition numbers. Like you said, you have a minus a negative four and you don't want to go too much over. You can put a positive one and you get that limit where you need to be in the Transition, if you're talking about that, if the length of backswing, let's say I want to make the length of backswing longer and my backswing is 140 centimeters or in VJ's case, 64 inches, he puts the minimum length of backswing to 64 inches and then he practices to go over that. And how do we set the learning stimuli? Let's go back to the app. Let's get out of here. Settings in the bottom right corner, always. Learning stimuli as is at the top. I just turn it on and it's on and I have learning stimuli level two. So what you want to do, there you go. You can either go through the guide and the guide will help you find your learning stimuli level or you can go through manual. When you go into manual here, you can choose between level one to seven and I recommend you start at one to test what level is good for you. Some people, one is good enough. Some Most people don't even feel level one and two. I usually use level four. And once you've picked up on your level, let's say I go to level three here, I can test the level. So what you always should do, you should test the level here. I press test the level. Then I press once here on the button. And then I could feel what level three felt like. One little point here to make is that when you're in the swing, you're probably going to need one more level up because in the swing, it's not going to feel as much as when I'm testing it statically like I do here. So le learning stimuli level is set and I'm ready to practice. And you can see here in the top corner here that the learning stimuli is live. When it's off, it looks like that. And now I've chosen my level. It's really easy for me to just get back there, click it. You can see what learning stimuli is on and it's enabled. And then I can go practice. Awesome. A couple other questions that have come in for us, Marcus. Yeah. First one, and I know this is a, this is a common question that we get um, from a lot of people. You kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but what is the best way at, at this time to use the whiz while you're playing a round of golf. So when you're actually out on the course and you're playing a round of golf, what was, what's the best way of utilizing the whiz? I usually use uh, transition. You can use any kind of feature length of backswing or tempo and everything. And uh, I turn the sound off, but if you're all playing alone, you can keep the sound on to get all your data I keep my phone in my pocket. Uh, you just need to keep the phone within Bluetooth range. If your cart is close to you, it works fine. Just don't hide it away with you blocking your body. It could block the uh, Bluetooth signal. Uh, and then I just look at my numbers after every shot or uh, and I star mark my good shots and I look at them afterwards. So that's it's very simple using the whist on the course. And uh, there's a lot of time between shots so you can walk with the phone or just ride in the cart and just take a look at what's going on. And now do you also, do you change your club selection prior to each swing as well? I do after each swing. Yep. So uh, when I change my club selection, I can show you what that looks like. Let's go into a swing here. And here is my club selection. It's a 54 wedge. 
my last shot was a 54 wedge, then this shot will pop up as a 54, but maybe it was a driver. Then I just go in here, and now the club is correct. So when you go back through it later, you can see ex actually exactly which club you, you hit. Shall we hit some balls and just look at some uh, look Let's at my, my numbers and get to know my numbers? Let's do it. This is the process we would like you to go through. So let me just, all right. Yep, we got you. And let's go to, let's go back here to discovery mode. I'm going to hit a seven iron. And if you're worried, if your unit is turned on, you can always see it's green here, which means it's connected. Or when you just got it like this, is it turned on or not? Just press it once and you get a white light, which means it's, it's on. So I got a seven iron, not completely warmed up after a little talk, but let's see. Is my start to impact one second or not? Length of backswing 139 centimeters. So it was 139 centimeters. Start to impact was 0.95, a little bit faster, quite a lot faster actually than, uh, than normal. My... Uh, Ratio was 2.8 to 1. I don't like to be over 3. So that was good. Um, so this is very, very much my numbers. Again, 139 centimeters. I look a lot at my length of backswing. I never want to feel like my backswing is short and it is long. It means that my arms have run away from my body. So that's personal for me. I look a lot at the start to impact time. And of course, I look a lot at transition. Now... I didn't get a transition here because I wasn't still enough to get a transition. I will be this time. Yeah, folks, make sure that prior to taking the swing, you get the ready for swing icon, you get the, the, the sound, and make sure you're still. 139. So again, 139. Transition was minus one. My tempo is very much back where it usually is 0.99 of a second i was a little bit over three to one but 3.1 is no problem so one centimeter i like to be very tight on the transition not more than minus three for me i hit some warm-up shot here today and i was minus five and the ball was coming out with a too big push draw for me so that's a big warning sign for me i don't want to be below uh, with an iron, uh, be minus three. So I'm looking at plus one or two to minus three. That's a good transition for me. And when I play a fade shot, I'm always going uh, more on top of it, uh, plus in transition. So this is um, this is very much my numbers. I had a pause, pause at the top of the backswing, about two hundredths of a second, and. Uh, yeah, I have a, a pretty high hand speed too. So I want to talk about the hand speed a little bit because that's another question that we get a lot as far as, you know, where should my max hand speed occur? Is there a correlation between my max hand speed and my backswing length? Just what what kind of data have we gathered about that? And, and what is what's the hope moving forward of um, you know, what we can find in our data to, to be able to correlate that max hand speed when it comes to club head speed or, you know, the correlation between that and your backswing length. We're looking a lot at the hand speed and the hand accelerations. Um, when it comes to hand speed, there's not a one-to-one -one correlation to the club head speed, but if your hand speed increases, if your max hand speed increases, uh, your club head speed will with a great chance increase so that's a good way to see if you're more efficient in your golf swing now you talked about where uh, the hand speed should uh, max hand speed should occur well we don't know but we know that better players occur earlier in the downswing or farther away from the impact and i like to say that that's 12 inches or at least 30 centimeters in a full swing with a mid iron to driver you want your hand speed before the impact and uh what we can see here is we're looking at the hand speed curve that we haven't marketed a lot. This is the hand speed curve on the bottom. The blue here is the backswing acceleration coming down to the first bottom arrow, which is a turn. Hand speed increases 
up to the max hand speed and decreases down to impact. And this is the release. The hand slow down to release the golf club. And then it goes up again and through to the, to the finish position. Um, what else about hand speed? Yes, hand speed doesn't say everything. Uh, funny thing, I spent uh, some time with Bryson uh, three weeks, four weeks ago, just before the Ryder Cup, and he was doing a speed session. We had to do whiz on him. And his max hand speed was just below 22 miles per hour with a club at speed where he broke his record of 148 miles per hour. And my max hand speed is uh, very similar, but my club at speed is maxed out at 120. So I'm quite far behind him. What he does, he accelerates the club more efficiently than I do. And he's way stronger than me too. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that part of it helps as well. Um, now Marcus, the one number that, we haven't talked much at all about today and something that um, that I've been looking at more on my swing is, is the backswing plane number. What should people be looking at um, when it comes to their plane and how maybe, you know, if you are somebody who hooks the ball, is there any sort of correlation that we're, we're finding between what that backswing plane number or the swing plane number should be and um you know what kind of you know maybe ball fights or um what issues we we run into um with that number when it comes to ball curvature like hook or slice transition is king if you're slicing the ball too much get to a negative transition and vice versa if you're hooking the ball get up more towards the on-plane transition which is a zero number and the plane is more like Keep track of your plane. Know your numbers. If you know you have a flat swing and you want to get it higher, use the, the, the swing plane to help you do that. Because again, what you feel is often not real. It's the same for me. It's the same for everybody. Just getting that outside objective reference of the West to know what you're really doing and not only what you feel you are doing. Absolutely. Um, trying to I'm looking and see. We have a couple more questions coming in. First one, is the plane measured on the backswing or the downswing? Backswing. That was backswing. That comment just came in. Thanks to, uh, let's see, that was Mark again. So Mark sending in both questions so far that we've, uh, that we've received. Um, should the plane number match your, the question is, should the plane number match your club's lie angle? No, but it gets flatter the longer the club you have. Again, this is the hand path plane. It's not the club plane. The club yep. plane is the lie angle. This is the lie angle, and it goes flatter with the driver. But we're looking at the hand hand plane. Absolutely. Well, Marcus, I uh, I thank you so much for for your time. Um, I, I think we we've covered a lot in this. We've we've been talking for forty minutes already. This uh, time time goes by uh, time goes by pretty quickly. Um, anything else you want to uh, kind of bring up to to our our users, our members, uh, people new to the group? Anything else? Any party words you have um, before we uh, get going here on our Saturday? Yeah, I really want to stress again: know your numbers. It's it's just look at the the, the data, hit some shots, change your clubs, and just get to know your swing from the outside in because you already know it from the inside out and you get that to match. It's really going to be helpful for your game and do the disc wedges challenge. It's a great way to develop your game and it's great fun. When we developed this, this feature, I, I couldn't, I can stop doing it. And that's why I, I still have the record. I hope I'm going to be beaten soon. And uh, last thing is that you can use the whiz without the golf ball. I have clients who use the whiz without the golf club. You can just look at those planes, those plane lines in the app. Because I have a friend of mine who has, has a tendency to go back and then outside in her pitch shots. So I got her to work at home without a club and just match those plane lines coming down the same way she got, went back. And it really helped her because she was shanking the pitch shots coming too much out. And also you're inside, you're hitting into a net. You can use the whiz inside your house, your garage, your basement. You don't need to be at a range anywhere that you can just, you, like you said, you don't even need to have a club, but 
If you want to work with a club, you don't even have to make contact with a ball. You can go in your basement, take some air swings, and, and it's going to be able to track um, all of your numbers, all of your data, so that you know when the uh, the winter runs through and you have your first golf trip next spring, uh, you'll be uh, you'll be ready to go. And one last thing. The Wiz recognizes your setup position. So now after five recorded swings, my the Wiz unit has locked me into my setup position. So if you want a friend to test your the Wiz and they don't get the ready to swing signal, it means that their setup position is a bit different than yours. Just restart the unit, just turn turn it off and turn it on and it recognizes their setup position. That's a great note because, like you said, you can have you can have a device and you can have multiple users on, on that same device. If if you're a coach um, that wants to use it with your with your students, if you're you know a dad that has multiple sons and you want to be able to have multiple profiles, you can do that as well. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. Well, Marcus, thanks again uh, for taking the time out. You're a busy man and I know you've had a busy week. So uh, so we thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And for everybody watching, we're, we're, we're asking all of our users, go on social media, tweet at us, post on Instagram, post on Facebook, use the hashtag know your numbers, do it by the end of this weekend. And we have some uh, we have some DeWiz merch that we're, we're looking to give out to uh to our users, our members, and our and our customers. So go on social media, post post screenshots of your numbers, how you're using DeWiz. Use hashtag Know Your Numbers for a chance to win some DeWiz merch. Marcus, thanks again. We appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you on Monday. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. Good night, everybody.